If you need the flyer for tomorrow night's Kwanzaa celebration in Fort Worth, Texas, you can text myself at 215-989-9858, So that's Kwanzaa Day 2, tomorrow, December the 27th, Wednesday. Doors open at 5, absolutely free. No tickets, no registration. Pull up. Absolutely free. No tickets, no registration. Pull up. I want to see Fort Worth. I want to see Arlington. I want to see Dallas. I want to see the whole Texas family in the building tomorrow night. I brought a few copies of Black Parent Advocate, but I don't have many. I brought a few copies of Black Parent Advocate, but I don't have many. First come, first serve. And then Thursday night. We are in Phoenix, Arizona, Kwanzaa Day 3. Kwanzaa Day 3. Collective Work and Responsibility. Kwanzaa Day 3, Grassroots Bookstore, Phoenix, Arizona. Doors open up at 5. Program 6 to 9. The Grassroots Bookstore in Phoenix, Arizona is located at 1145 East Washington Street. 1145 East Washington Street in Phoenix, Arizona, Thursday night, Kwanzaa Day 3. Detroit, Michigan, Kwanzaa Day 5. Detroit, Michigan, Kwanzaa Day 5. Detroit, Michigan, Kwanzaa Day 5. Once again, absolutely free. Doors at 4, program 6 to 9. Kwanzaa Day 5 in Detroit will be at the King Solomon Church. 6100 14th Street in Detroit, Michigan. King Solomon Church this Saturday, December the 30th, 6100 14th Street. Doors open up at 5. Let me say good evening to all my beautiful African queens around the diaspora. Let me say good evening to all beautiful African women and all African women are beautiful around the world tonight because this is a full moon in cancer and cancer is the sign of the black divine feminine. I said tonight is the full moon in cancer and whenever we have a full moon in cancer, we celebrate the great divine feminine, the African Feminine principle is represented by cancer. So I want to say peace and pan-Africanism to all my African sisters around the planet, around the universe, around the globe. Tonight is your night, black woman. Tonight is your night, black queen. Tonight is your night, black sister. Tonight is your night, black, black empress. It is the full moon in cancer celebrating and recognizing the great black feminine divine. The great black African feminine divine. And for those of you who have your Chiron planet in Aries, as do I, Chiron just went direct tonight at 1010. The prophet Nat Turner had his Chiron in Aries. Nelson Mandela had his Chiron in Aries. And the Prince of Pan-Africanism, yours truly, Dr. Umar Ifatunde Oguntade, also has my Chiron in Aries. The reason I'm going live tonight is I want to address the Neanderthal nation. I'm going live tonight. I want to address the Neanderthal nation. Oh, yes, I do. I want to talk black to the Caucasians who have been stalking me for the past 48 hours. I want to talk to the Neanderthal nation tonight, the Caucasian community. You have been cyber stalking me for 48 hours and I don't mind. I don't mind. You can continue to do it as long as you want because I don't care if the opinion of every Caucasian is to the contrary. I say what I mean to say and I stand on everything I say 10 toes down. But let me say this to the Caucasian community. Let me say this to the Caucasian community. When I look at your anger, when I look at your rage, when I look at the responses from America's Caucasian community over this issue of Eminem being the goat of hip hop. And let me say this. I have nothing personal against Eminem. My comments on the Joe Button podcast had nothing to do with 
Mr. Marshall Mathers personally. And I want Mr. Marshall Mathers to understand that Dr. Umar Ifatunde harbors no personal ill will towards you. This is not personal. This is business. This is not personal. This is business. Eminem, I want you to hear me, young man. This is not personal. This is business. You are a talented musician, lyricist, producer. You seem like you are an okay guy. You've never done nothing to me, and you've never done anything that I personally witnessed to be worthy of condemnation. So my comments are not personal. They apply to any non-African. This is about business, the business of protecting the integrity of African culture. I said my comments on the Joe Button podcast was about business, not personal. The business of protecting the sacredness, authenticity, and integrity of African culture. I said that no non-African can ever be the best of anything in African culture. You can't be the best cook of African food. You can't be the best rapper of African hip hop. You can't be the best singer. You can't be the best priest of African culture. Nothing we create can a non-African be the best at. First of all, it makes absolutely no sense at all. I don't even see how an African can come to the conclusion that a non-African can be the best at anything when we are the oldest people. We are the first people and we are the most numerous people. So when you say a non-African is better at X, Y, and Z than a member of the race, you're saying that this person can do this better than two billion Africans or you're saying not only can they do it better than two billion Africans on the planet you're saying they can do it better than all of the billions of Africans that have ever walked the planet earth you know and I know that that is absolutely ridiculous you know and I know that that is absolutely ridiculous you know, like I know, that that is absolutely ridiculous. And from a cultural integrity perspective, from a cultural integrity perspective, this is not about Mr. Marshall Mathis. I don't have nothing personal against that man. But from a personal, from a, excuse me, from a cultural integrity perspective, haven't they stolen enough from us? Haven't they appropriated enough from us? Haven't they robbed, steal, killed, enslaved, lynched, miseducated, mass incarcerated, politically dominated us enough? That you mean to tell me that after 404 years, you got black people running around playing defense attorney and cheerleader for white folks? You got black people running around after 404 years playing defense attorney and cheerleader. The fact that you got black people arguing for a white man to be considered the greatest of all time in an African art form speaks to how psychologically ill we are as a race of people. After all we have been through in this country, you got black men, black men running around playing defense attorney for white folks, advocating for Marshall Mathers, nothing against Eminem personally, but for a black person to go out of their way to fight for any white person to be considered the greatest of all time in an art form that should be sacred to our community, our culture, and our people is absolutely ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous. But let me address the Caucasian community. Because I've been called racist probably a thousand times today. And I don't mind. I absolutely do not mind. Because there's a few things we know. After a thousand years of direct interaction with Caucasians, there's a few things we do know. 
One thing we know about you is you're not honest about anything if it jeopardizes your power and control of other groups. Let me say that one more time. I'm talking to all you Caucasians who saw fit to have a temper tantrum on my timeline. I'm talking to all you Caucasians who saw fit to flood my inbox. I'm talking to all you Caucasians who saw fit to post comments or being told they have no business exploiting black culture but we don't see that same energy for giving black people reparations we don't see that same energy for justice for black people we don't see that same energy with making sure african people get their fair share of a country that our ancestors built with their bare hands see if they were if they cared as much about police brutality as they care about Eminem being called the GOAT. If they cared as much about police brutality against black people as they care about Eminem being called the GOAT. If they cared as much about mass incarceration reform as they cared about Eminem being called the GOAT. If they cared as much for black women being sexually trafficked as they care about Eminem being called the GOAT, we would have solved a lot of our problems by now calling somebody racist when your people are the greatest purveyors of racism and genocide in the history of humanity. Calling someone racist when your people are the greatest purveyors of racism and genocide in the history of humanity, I find it quite hypocritical. I find it quite hypocritical. Brothers and sisters, I'm in Fort Worth, Texas, 13th annual Kwanzaa tour. And it'll probably be the last because next Kwanzaa will be at FDMG. This is probably my 13th and final Kwanzaa tour because next Kwanzaa will be at FDMG. Hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Let's take some questions for FDMG. If you have a question for me, make a donation of $5 or more to cash.me slash dollar sign FDMG school. If you have a question you want me to answer, text your question in your cash app donation. Text your question in your cash app donation, dollar sign FDMG school, or get on your PayPal, paypal.me slash FDMG Academy. PayPal.me slash FDMG Academy. You can ask your question in your PayPal donation. You can ask your question on your Cash App donation. Dollar sign FDMG School Cash App. Dollar sign FDMG School Cash App. Let me see if I have a Cash App question. Let me see if I have a Cash App question. Dollar sign FDMG school. You can ask your question when you make your cash app donation of five dollars or more. Why would you pay for a question when Google is free? Because number one, I'm not Google, and number two, I'm sending you to the Snow Bunny block party. Brothers and sisters, they have invaded my box, posting all over my timeline, upset because their Caucasian privilege has been disturbed. Upset because your Caucasian privilege has been disturbed. Upset because your Caucasian privilege has been disturbed. You think you have a right to invade black people's space. You think you have a right to invade black people's space. You think we don't have a right to tell you you're not welcome. When you always tell us we're not welcome. Did you forget we had to fight for our children to go to decent schools because y'all kept us out? Did you forget we had to fight in order to work in the armed forces because y'all kept us out? Did you forget we had to fight to live in the suburbs because y'all kept us out? We had to fight to take public transportation because y'all kept us out. We had to fight to go to the supermarket or the movie theater or to go swimming on in a pool because y'all kept us out. And you mean to tell me because I said 
no non-African has any business being considered the greatest of all time in any aspect of our cultural expression, now you got an attitude. So if I'm a racist for saying that, which I cannot be because racism implies the ability to disenfranchise another group of people. I don't have that ability. See, y'all love to call black people racist because it's a distraction away from your racism. Y'all love to call us racist because it's a distraction from who the real racists are. We never hung nobody from no trees. We never created diseases to get rid of nobody. We never intentionally miseducated your children. But you call us racist because you have this thing where you have to always play victim. You have to always play the victim so nobody realizes you're the perpetrator. You have to always play victim so nobody realizes you're the perpetrator. You have to always play victim so nobody realizes that you're actually the perpetrator. I see how this game go. I'm a racist because I said Eminem has no business being called a goat. But when your grandparents and even today when you discriminate against black folks, when you redline us into ghettos and when you redline us from bank loans and when you keep us out of jobs and give them to white folks who are less qualified, are you not a racist? A bunch of damn hypocrites. A bunch of damn hypocrites. A bunch of damn hypocrites. If y'all had this energy for police brutality, why isn't the George Floyd police reform bill why hasn't that been put into legislation yet why hasn't the george floyd police reform bill been signed into law yet so-called liberal caucasians where is the george floyd police reform bill but y'all up here crying crocodile tears for eminem you're up here crying crocodile tears for Eminem. Where is the George Floyd police reform bill at? But y'all want to flood my inbox. Arrogance. Narcissism. Terrorism. When I think of you, I think of arrogance. I think of narcissism. I think of terrorism. I think of arrogance. You think you got a right to do whatever you want. I think of narcissism. You think you God's gift to the world. And I think of terrorism. Anybody who doesn't do what you want them to do, you think you can terrorize them. White privilege. White privilege. White privilege. Brothers and sisters, I'm feeling marvelous tonight in Fort Worth, Texas. I'm feeling marvelous tonight. I'm looking forward to seeing all my Fort Worth act for Africans tomorrow. For the quant I'm looking forward to seeing my Phoenix family. I ain't seen my Phoenix family in damn near 10 years. Can't wait to see my Detroit Africans on Saturday. Can't wait to see my Jamaican Africans at the Maroon Festival on January the 6th. I can't wait to see my Sacramento Africans on Thursday, January the 18th. I can't wait to see my Antioch, California Africans on Friday, January the 19th. I can't wait to see my Oakland, California Africans on Saturday, January the 20th. Trying to use white privilege and bully tactics to force your narrative. Y'all been doing that for 500 years. You're not tired yet. Y'all been using y'all white privilege to bully people into adopting your narrative for 500 years. Y'all not tired yet. Y'all been using bully tactics to force your narrative on black people for 500 years. Y'all not done yet? I'm a racist 
because I said black people need to protect our cultural spaces. Always calling somebody a racist whenever they don't agree with you. Always calling somebody a racist whenever your white privilege doesn't give you access to control the narrative. Always calling somebody racist whenever your white privilege doesn't give you access to control the narrative and you think I give a damn about you flooding my inbox? You really think I care about what you think about me? Have you lost your mind? Do you not know what unapologetically African means? Do you not know what unapologetically African means? You are the reincarnation of the slave master. That's what you are. You are the reincarnation of the slave master trying to play victim. Give me a break. Give me a break. Give me a break. You got your panties in a bunch. Because I won't let Eminem be the white Jesus of black music. You got your panties in a bunch because I won't let Mr. Marshall Mathers be crowned white Jesus of the hip hop industry. Like y'all crowned Elvis Presley. Y'all artificially crowned Elvis Presley as the white Jesus of rock and roll when all he did was plagiarize, copy and steal from Little Richard, Chuck Berry and others. Give me a break. Give me a break. Give me a break. Y'all want a white face in front of everything. And whenever you don't get it, you have a temper tantrum. And you Negroes who standing in solidarity against your culture with the Caucasians, y'all need to be whipped. You soft beta male Negro peeing coons, y'all need to be whipped. Y'all need to be horse whipped. Always going out of your way to defend your oppressor. Y'all need to be horse whipped, every last one of you. Is that another Negro peeing? You have a nice day. Since y'all so liberal, right? Since y'all so liberal, we about what, 15% of the population allegedly? I think it's much higher than that. But you say with 15% of the American population, since you're so liberal, why don't you give us 15% of the banks, 15% of the supermarkets, 15% of the schools, 15% of the wealth, 15% of the natural resources. I mean, since we so liberal now, since everybody wants to be so liberal now, give us our 15% of everything in the country. This is not reparations. This is equity. Don't confuse equity with reparations. We're talking about constitutional equity here. We're talking about equity. We are not dealing with reparations. We're dealing with equity. Since we're 15%, there goes another pale face. Mm -mm -mm. All of my feet. I have never went to a Caucasian live and tried to get on and post anything. All in my inbox because y'all don't like the fact I said no white person can be king of black art. After all you have stolen from us, after all you have appropriated from us, why do you have a problem with me saying no Caucasian should be king of African art? Why should, after all you have stolen, after all the stealing y'all do, right? After all the killing y'all do, 
after all the injustice y'all inflict on African people, why do you have a problem with me saying y'all have no business being called the greatest of anything? Fort Worth, Texas, I'm in the building. Fort Worth, Texas, I'm in the building. Now, I'm not going to spend no more time on the Neanderthal Nation. I have zero patience for the Snow Bunny Brigade. I want to talk to my black queens tonight. So this is a full moon in cancer. Where are my beautiful African queens at? Where are my natural hair queens at? Where are my sisters with natural hair? Where are all my sisters with natural hair at? If you a black woman with no weave, no perm, and no European color in your hair, make some noise. If you a black woman with no weave, no perm, no European hair color in your hair, make some noise. If you a black woman with no weave, no perm, no European hair color in your hair, make some noise. We must not only be unapologetically African, we must also be authentically African. We must be originally African. We must be organically African. Black women, I'm talking to my sisters, all Neanderthals, can you please exit the live? I'm now having a private conversation with the queens of the African race. Continental African queens, Caribbean African queens, British African queens, French African queens, German African queens, Austrian African queens. Canadian African Queens, South American African Queens, Central American African Queens, my Fort Worth, Texas African Queens, my Houston, Texas African Queens, my Arlington, Texas African Queens, my Dallas, Texas African Queens, my Phoenix, Arizona African Queens, my Tucson, Arizona African Queens, my Detroit, Michigan African Queens. I'm having a private conversation. All colonizers, genociders, Exploiters, imitators, thieves, please exit the chat. All pasty ass pilgrims, please exit the chat. The mayonnaise session has ended. The mayonnaise session has ended. Exit the chat. African sisters, y'all need to get ready to organize in the new year. We need black women to organize with black women. Y'all got to put the petty shit aside. Our daughters need y'all. Our queen mothers need y'all. We need black women to form into a strong revolutionary force. We need all black queens to unite on some black power. I said all black women need to unite on some black power. The time is now.